$3,000 into this 2000 Oldsmobile Bravada. Let's find out why it's so high. Let's get started. Yes, you do see a domestic car in the wizard shop, which he said he would only work on exotics, only. I never said that. In fact, here's a little clip of what I said. And get back to basics, back to the roots of Omega Auto Clinic, and that is European, exotic, and some upper level Asian cars. I never said exotics only and nothing else. I don't even know where that came from. I've been seeing a lot in the comments. I never said it. When I made that statement a while back, I actually had a mechanic tell me, Car Wizard, if you continue to bring these in, I will walk. I'll quit. It's really hard to find mechanics, good mechanics today, and I was like, okay, you know, and thinking back, I originally always wanted to have a European exotic and maybe some Asians type of a shop. It's like, all right, normally I probably wouldn't go along with this, but it does kind of make sense because that's what I wanted to do all along. But now that person no longer works here. Junior Mint is here. He absolutely loves these, and I love them too. So we will be taking these back on the schedule again. This happens to businesses all across the world that they kind of evolve or change based on the employees they have or the services they can offer. From one month to the next, they may offer this or they offer that. It's just kind of the way things work anymore. Now let's talk about why this thing is here and why the estimate is so high. It's because there's so much that it needs. You guys remember the little smart car that was just in here? That one's actually fixed and it's gone. They're happy with it. They said, hey, we've got an Oldsmobile Bravada. If you would take it on, that needs quite a bit of work. We'd like you to inspect it and, and go over everything that you find and we'll approve or decline what you find. We found quite a lot. I've actually already presented everything to the customer and he said, do it all. I'm very happy to pay for it. And it's really a strange scenario because for 3,000 bucks, you could go buy another one of these. You could make that argument, but it will need another 3,000 to sort it out. So it's not like you can go buy another one and it's fully sorted. This one will be when it leaves this shop. Let's go ahead and take a look around this thing. I haven't seen one of these in a long time. I've seen S10s, I've seen the Sonoma version of these, all kinds of different ones all over the road. It's been a long time since I've seen the Bravada. I remember the commercials for them, actually. They were really cool. Here's the front of this Bravada. You can see it has the Oldsmobile symbol, which we don't see anymore because that company no longer exists, sadly. It does have some fogging going on on the headlights. We'll see maybe if they want us to go ahead and clear those up. As we move to the side, you can see it has the vintage, now vintage, 15 inch wheels. I actually like 15s, I always did like them. It does have this cladding on the side, which you don't see on the S10 Blazer, which looks really nice. And there's no dents or scratches or anything serious on this side. I do notice right here, it used to have pinstriping. You can see the little gold stripes there. It's since been removed. Does this look familiar, Mrs. Wizard? It really does. I met you driving a 98 light blue Chevy Blazer. Yes, and our first kiss was in that too. Oh, it was, and it was a great car until the transmission died. Yeah, it was a actually a really cool vehicle. This side also, not dinged up or beat up or rusted. A few little scuffs here and there, but it's to be expected. It's an older vehicle. Let's go ahead and jump under the hood. Here is our venerable 4.3 V6, the Vortec version of it. Except for the fuel injection system, the spider assembly, which is common on any of the small block V8s that had these, they are a bulletproof engine. It's basically a small block Chevy with two cylinders lopped off. It's so much just like the small block Chevy that all these accessories you see, all of them, can bolt to a 350 or a 305 or 400. It's basically identical, just two cylinders less. This one has some issues with heater hoses. They're getting spongy and soft, and just from age, they got some dry rotting going on. The timing cover's actually leaking. We're gonna show you that somebody else has been in here before. Let's get this thing in the air. So as we're filming this, Junior Mint's actually tearing into it. He's already got a lot of things disassembled on it. 
but it has a ton of little things that need to be fixed. And one of the big items, which I looked it up is a 10 hour job, is the timing cover. There's quite a lot of things that have to come off. All those brackets, all those accessories and stuff has to be moved out of the way and you can get the water pump off. It's quite a big job. Let's take a look at this oil filter. It's in a strange location. This has a remote oil filter. It is separate from the engine because of the drive shaft that's in the way. The oil comes in here and goes out to an oil cooler here and back to the engine. These lines that go to the oil cooler, if you run the engine, it actually starts leaking oil out. So those need to be replaced. You can see that blue color right there. It's actually an oil pan gasket that's been replaced at some point recently in the past. And when you start the engine, it literally pours out of the timing cover right here and just comes pouring out in f on top of the oil pan there. The customer's not interested in warranty or trying to call out whoever did the job last. I, th I think they just want it done. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to fix it for them and make it not leak anymore. Dear, I feel like I'm at the rainforest at the zoo. It's kind of drippy under here. Yep, antifreeze is coming down a little bit. He undid the actual hoses that go to the water pump and there was a little bit in there and some of it came out. It happens. As we're going in there, we're going to see it's going to need a lower radiator hose. It's also going to need, obviously, fresh new coolant. The radiator is going to be removed so that it doesn't get damaged or anything, taking all the stuff apart. Let's take a little further look as we go along. We can see here it's had new ball joints put on. You can see here Junior Matt has the sway bar off. These links were really badly worn. Also, the bushings were really badly worn. As you can see, obviously not the tensioner bearing there, but they were literally disintegrating into dust. And they're 24 years old, so it's to be expected. But the oil leaking, like we showed on the timing cover, getting onto those shortened the life of them. Let's show you why the oil filter is all the way under the radiator. You see those two bolts up there? It's actually an adapter that has the oil lines that come out of it. As you can see, if you were to put an oil filter there, it wouldn't even fit the differentials in the way. There's just no way. It's impossible. Another thing that I see, this transmission's been replaced sometime recently in the past. It's all a gray color. I'm not sure who the company is or who rebuilt it, but this is not the original transmission that was in this. So at some point, it must have had a shell out on the transmission, which makes sense because that's why they call these the 4L Slippy. Here's our transfer case. Nothing seems to be leaking there. He wants to go ahead and service the fluids but the back where the output shaft seal is, is leaking. Junior Mint has actually cleaned that off and monitored it for leaks and it is starting to leak again, so that needs to be taken care of. Few joints are good. The brake pads are about 50%. You do see some brand new shocks. We just replaced those, or actually Junior Mint did, because the old ones had oil leaking down the sides of them, so they were bad. Customer supplied these are actually in the back seat, said, could you put those on? We're happy to do it. Let's check out these tires. It does have a date code of 02 of 16, which is pretty old. We'll let the customer know they may need to be looking into some tires. They look fine. They're probably usable, but they definitely are getting up there in the age. They're about eight years old now. I don't know if that helps though, wizard. Oh, a nail. Nice. And with the nail in the tire, it's another one of those things that nobody knew about it until we start looking around. So. We'll get that plugged and then definitely recommend some new tires. Let's get this thing on the ground. I remember when Oldsmobile went under, or they just closed that brand in 2004. They said, we're done with Oldsmobile, there will be no more. I actually like Oldsmobiles. I always have liked them. And it was kind of sad when that happened, but luckily, like some car brands go under, you might be screwed. They, they may have problems with parts, can you even get parts? Just like Victory motorcycles. One of my friends has a Victory and it's always a challenge to try and find parts because that company is no longer in business. Luckily on this situation here, it's a General Motors product with basically a Chevy V8, Chevy transmission. Everything on here is pretty much General Motors, so the parts will be available. So why does it cost $3,000? I'll tell you why, half of it right up front is the 10 hours of labor to get that timing cover off. At $150 an hour, $1,500, just like that. Then we've got heater hoses, both of them to replace. They're both kind of weak and dry rotted. We're not gonna chance just replacing one, we're gonna do both. 
We got sway bar bushings and sway bar links. The timing cover, like I just mentioned. Rear shocks being replaced, which the customer supplied the shocks. A radiator cap, output shaft seal. One of the bulbs are out for the blinkers. One thing we forgot to show you, the transmission mount where the transfer case mounts is actually cracked in half. So we're going to do that as well. The oil cooler hoses, which they were expensive just buying the set themselves, and a transmission service, differential service, and a transfer case service. It adds up a little bit at a time, 200 here, 150 there, 300 there. You're at three grand. Many people email me, ask me, hey, I've got this big estimate at this shop. Is it worth fixing it on this car? That's constantly a thing we run up against these days. You really have to kind of balance can you buy another car that's fully sorted for that much money? In this case, no. So I don't know what they paid for the vehicle. These are worth probably two grand, 2,500 bucks. If you find a perfect, perfect one, maybe five grand. So putting three grand into it, we're kind of right at what the value of a sorted one of these is. It's definitely worth fixing then. This customer lives a little bit distance away, so it doesn't make sense to say, do two items, I'll bring it back. Then we'll do two more items and I'll bring it back. That's a complete waste of time. It's here. He said, let's do it all. Then I can give this vehicle back to my wife. She can drive it and it's going to be reliable. All these issues are sorted and it's worth it because I know I can hand her the keys and just drive the vehicle. I don't want to search for new vehicles and then chance getting one that's just as bad all over again. So this is one of those situations it does make sense to go ahead and put the money into it and get it sorted out. These are very reliable. They can easily go 250, 350 range on thousands of miles. This one's only about 120,000. It has double that to go in its life. So there could be a lot of time and miles still gained out of this Bravada. The weakness, the transmission, has already been taken care of. So that won't have to be worried about. It's done. How many of you guys remember the Bravada commercial? They really pushed the smart track thing on this with the smart, intelligent drive system on it and all that. It was really cool. I remember seeing that and going, wow, that's really cool. They have all this technology on it. It's really not all that great of technology today, but back then it, it really was. I like the way these look as well. Again, I always like Oldsmobiles. So if you're curious what kind of tools Junior Mint is using on this or we use on any other car in the shop, Check our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut if you purchase anything. We really appreciate it. Yes, we are taking domestic cars back in the shop again. Like I said, it wasn't me that had the problem. I enjoy domestic cars. And make sure to hit the subscribe button here because there's many more videos to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.